Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're embarking on an incredible journey through time to explore the origins of stars, the solar system, the planets, and the emergence of life. So grab your backpacks of curiosity as we dig deep into a timeline that spans billions of years. Let's begin! In our last video, we saw that our story starts over 13.7 billion years ago with the Big Bang, a massive explosion that marked the birth of the universe. What we see today, the stars, galaxies, and of course, our very own Earth, just began as a speck of energy. After the Big Bang event, giant clouds of gas and dust, called nebulae, swirled through space. Over time, localized clumps of gas, especially hydrogen, started to form inside a nebula. These clumps continue to grow into even denser gaseous bodies called protostars. Eventually, the increase in the temperature and pressure at the core triggers the nuclear fusion reactions. Hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. This marks the birth of a new star. The formation of stars is believed to have taken place around 5 to 6 billion years ago. Matter and energy were not evenly distributed in the early universe. These initial density differences gave rise to differences in gravitational forces and it caused the matter to get drawn together. These formed the basis for the development of the galaxies. So what is the difference between a nebula and a galaxy? As we discussed earlier, a nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. These are regions where new stars are forming. On the other hand, a galaxy is a massive collection of gas, dust, and billions of stars, along with their solar systems, all held together by gravity. Nebulae are found within these galaxies. Galaxies come in various shapes and sizes. Some are spiral-shaped, like our own Milky Way galaxy. Others are elliptical, appearing smooth and oval, while some have irregular shapes that look more like blobs. Now let's see how the planets are formed around a star. After a star forms, a rotating disk of gas and dust, known as a protoplanetary disk, surrounds it. Within this disk, particles of dust and gas collide and stick together, forming larger clumps. These clumps grow over time, becoming pebbles, rocks, and eventually planetesimals, that is, small planetary building blocks. These planetesimals continue to collide and merge, forming larger bodies. Gravity helps these growing bodies attract more material. As planetesimals grow, they become protoplanets. These protoplanets clear their orbits of smaller debris through collisions and gravitational interactions. Over millions of years, protoplanets accumulate enough mass to become planets. In the outer regions of the disk, where it's colder, gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn can form by accumulating large amounts of gas. Closer to the star, rocky planets like Earth and Mars form from solid materials. As you all know, our solar system consists of the Sun and eight planets named Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. The planets in our solar system are supposed to have been formed about 4.6 billion years ago and it is a part of the Milky Way galaxy. Other than the Sun and the eight planets, we have hundreds of moons, millions of smaller bodies like asteroids and comets and a huge quantity of dust grains and gases. The planets in our solar system are categorized as inner and outer planets. This distinction is based on the asteroid belt, a torus-shaped region in the solar system, situated between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. It contains numerous solid, irregularly shaped bodies known as asteroids or minor planets. The planets that lie between the Sun and the asteroid belt are known as inner planets. They are also known as terrestrial planets due to their solid, rocky surfaces. The terrestrial planets were formed in the close vicinity of the Sun where it was too warm for gases to condense to solid particles. The inner planets are Mercury, the smallest and closest planet to the Sun. Venus, known for its thick, toxic atmosphere and extreme surface temperatures. Earth, the only planet known to support life, with a diverse climate and water in all three states. Mars, the red planet, famous for its iron oxide surface and the largest volcano and canyon in the solar system. 
the four other planets outside the asteroid belt are known as outer planets. They are also known as Jovian or gas giants. Most of them are much larger than the terrestrial planets and have thick atmospheres, mostly of helium and hydrogen. The outer planets are Jupiter, the largest planet, known for its great red spot and many moons. Saturn, famous for its stunning ring system. Uranus, notable for its tilted axis and icy composition. Neptune, known for its deep blue color and strong winds. Pluto was considered as the ninth planet till 2006. After the discovery of multiple bodies comparable to Pluto, astronomers thought that either they all had to be called planets or Pluto would have to be reclassified. As a result, in August 2006, the International Astronomical Union defined the definition of a planet and from then onwards Pluto was considered a dwarf planet. Before moving to the next topic, do you know what is the measurement unit of distance used by astronomers to define astronomical distances? The astronomical unit is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth. Its value is 150 million kilometers. It is used primarily for measuring distances within the solar system or around other stars. Oh. So what is a light year? A light year is a measure of distance which is used to measure vast distances beyond our solar system, such as the distance to stars and galaxies. A light year is the distance that light travels in a vacuum in one Julian year, 365.25 days. In one year, light travels 9.46 trillion kilometers. The closest star to Earth other than the Sun is Proxima Centauri, which is approximately 4.2 light years away. It means that the light from Proxima Centauri will take 4.2 years to reach Earth. Then, Imagine how far the nearest major galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, is located, approximately 2.5 million light-years from Earth. When we observe the Andromeda Galaxy now, we are actually seeing it as it was about 2.5 million years ago. So now we know how planets including our Earth were formed. Let's see how our Earth evolved into the present form we live in today. Early Earth was a harsh and hostile environment. It was a molten ball of rock, bombarded by asteroids and comets. As Earth grew, it heated up, causing heavier elements like iron and nickel to sink to the center, forming the core, while lighter elements formed the mantle and crust. The core is composed of a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. It is made up of very heavy materials like nickel and iron. The mantle is a thick layer of semi-solid rock. The major constituent elements of the mantle are silicon and magnesium. The crust is the thin, outermost layer where we live. Silicon and aluminium are the major constituent elements of the crust. The Earth's atmosphere also evolved during this time. The initial atmosphere of Earth is called as primordial atmosphere. It was composed of hydrogen and helium which were eventually lost to space. In the second stage, continuous volcanic eruptions released water vapor, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane, forming a thicker atmosphere. As the planet began to cool down, about 4 billion years ago, conditions became more favorable. Water vapor condensed to form oceans, and the surface settled into a more stable environment. The carbon dioxide in the atmosphere got dissolved in rainwater, and the temperature further decreased causing more condensation and more rain. Further, the tectonic activity and erosion shaped the continents and ocean basins as well. So now it's time for life. Life likely began in the oceans around 3.8 billion years ago. Scientists believe that the early Earth's oceans, formed from water vapor condensing, became a breeding ground for life. Simple organic molecules, the building blocks of life, began to form from inorganic matter. These molecules, like amino acids and nucleotides, started to self-assemble, forming complex structures. Eventually, these structures enclosed themselves in membranes, giving rise to the first single-celled organisms, prokaryotes. These were incredibly simple life forms, but they were the first step on the long road to complex life. Over millions of years, these simple organisms evolved, developing new abilities. The first significant milestone in this evolutionary journey was the development of photosynthesis around 3 billion years ago. 
photosynthetic microbes, like cyanobacteria, began producing oxygen as a byproduct of converting sunlight into energy. This process gradually transformed Earth's atmosphere, leading to the Great Oxidation event about 2.4 billion years ago. With oxygen building up in the atmosphere, more complex life forms could develop. Eukaryotes, organisms with complex cells containing a nucleus, emerged around 2 billion years ago. These eukaryotes eventually led to the development of multicellular organisms. By about 600 million years ago, the first animals, resembling today's sponges and jellyfish, appeared. Fast forward to around 500 million years ago, and we see the Cambrian explosion, a period of rapid diversification of life forms. During this time, most of the major animal phyla we recognize today appeared. Following this explosion of life, plants began to colonize land, paving the way for the first land animals. The evolution of life on land continued with the rise of amphibians, reptiles, and eventually mammals. Fast forward to around 65 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs ended with a mass extinction event, paving the way for mammals to become the dominant land animals. And now, let's zoom in on our own species. Humans belong to the genus Homo, which evolved from earlier hominins. Our lineage traces back to Africa, where early human ancestors developed key traits like bipedalism and larger brain sizes. Different hominid species emerged, each adapting to their environment. Australopithex, Homo habili, Homo erectus, each species represented a step towards modern humans. They developed increasingly sophisticated tools, learned to control fire, and began to migrate out of Africa. Finally, around 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, our own species, appeared on the scene. We possessed larger brains, complex language, and the ability for abstract thought. We developed complex cultures, art, and technology. We spread across the globe, adapting to diverse environments. And here we are today, the culmination of billions of years of evolution. We are a testament to the incredible power of life to adapt, evolve, and thrive. But our journey is far from over. We face new challenges, and it's up to us to ensure that the story of life on Earth continues. Thank you for traveling back in time with us today. If you enjoyed this exploration of origins, please like and subscribe for more fascinating content. Leave your questions and thoughts in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.